I have watched a lot of YouTube videos with people presenting their DNA ancestry results and there's a common lack of understanding that just, just infuriates me. I mean, I don't blame the people who make these videos. It's quite understandable that they believe what they say. I blame the marketing of these DNA tests that seems to imply the total 100% accuracy of the results even though they never directly state it. If you look deeply into the explanations of the results on their website, and sometimes you have to look very deeply, they actually explain it quite well in most cases. Uh, anyway, here's a few clips demonstrating one of my gripes. And then you have 0.2% <laughs> Sub-Saharan African and I have 0%. I am definitely the most surprised that I am 0.2% Sub-Saharan African. But the biggest surprise is, is you are 1% Native American Andean. But really? Really? Finally, this is the, this was the shocker. 4% Polynesian. First of all, where even is that? And that is nowhere near the Middle East or Saudi Arabia or anywhere really. It's literally in the middle of nowhere. And then I'm 1.1% Nigerian. That is so funny. All these people seem to believe they actually must have ancestors from these locations and are quite shocked by what they believe is that. But all I can say is fake news. Well, fake news might be an exaggeration, as more often than not, fake news actually is closer to the truth than those saying it would like us to believe. But anyway, in this next clip, there is a phrase used that may help in understanding why it is not absolute fact. See if you can spot it. Oh, there's a little half percentage here. It's a low confidence. It's less than 1% um, East Africa. I have a little bit of, you know, a little drop <laughs> from East Africa. Did you spot it? Did you spot it? Well, if you didn't, don't worry. He said it, but it, even he didn't spot it. Though, neither did many others who said it in their videos either. Here is what he said again. It's a low confidence. It's a low confidence. Now, some of these testing companies will list the low percentage ancestry results under a heading of low confidence regions or something similar. Now, think about the meaning of those two words. Low not very much. Confidence being how certain we are about something. Put those together and it means the DNA testing company doesn't have much certainty about these actually being regions your ancestors are from. Though it is still within the realms of possibility Here's a clip from Talia Monet, I think that's how you say it. She says a lot of people think she's Ethiopian. And this is her view on these small percentages. 1% Eastern Africa. So for everybody that thinks that I'm Ethiopian, there you go. 1% nothing. She is probably literally right that it's nothing. But why is this? I guess to understand that, you need to understand how these companies work out the different regions and percentages. When you send in your DNA to them, they generally select hundreds of thousands of points on your DNA to see which one of the four DNA letters is coded there. These are points that are known to vary between different populations of people. And testing hundreds of thousands of these points 
means they can check whether you have combinations that are associated with particular populations. But how do they know which points are the right ones to test? Put simply, the entire 3.3 billion coding points are sequenced for individuals who have a long ancestry in a particular region, usually a few hundred years. Then, these are compared to other individuals who have been tested from the same and other regions. The accuracy of all this will depend on how many people have been tested in each region and between the regions. This is utilising a relatively new science. It has been less than 20 years since it became possible to sequence the entire genetic code of an individual. And it originally cost billions of dollars, but now it's down to less than 10 grand. So the number of people tested has been low, but with the time and costs involved decreasing, the numbers tested and the accuracy have improved and will improve even more in the future. But when it comes to comparing the data to your DNA, it is a bit of a combination of science and art. The different DNA testing companies test different DNA points and may even use different population data to compare to your DNA. They also use different algorithms for calculating your results. Consequently, you will find that the results from different DNA companies will often be different. Generally, the regions with larger percentages will be similar, but the percentages will be different, and the low confidence regions may even be totally different regions. Personally, I have had DNA tests for my ancestry from three different companies. All say I'm 100% European. The regions differ and so do the percentages, though most are in northwestern Europe. The regions for smaller percentages differ from company to company, though one actually says I'm 100% British. But my great-grandfather was actually from Denmark. The results from other companies and the genetic matches that they have confirms this Danish ancestry. From my reading and experience, I guess that until recently, I would not have placed too much confidence in ancestors being from regions of less than, say, 15 to 20 percent. But with some companies updating their results, I could drop this to as low as about 5% for some. This doesn't mean your ancestors don't come from those regions. It just means I wouldn't state it as fact unless you have other evidence, like, say, a paper trail to back it up. The small percentages information would possibly be most useful for people tracing their family tree and looking for possible leads to follow up. But if you're just doing the DNA test out of simple curiosity about where your ancestors came from, then perhaps this is the best attitude to follow. I don't really care. I mean, because at the end of the day, I'm still going to be the same person that I was yesterday. It's just fun. You know, it's just for fun. I'm David A. Elliott. If you like what you have seen, click on the like button, make sure you subscribe and keep watching for new videos. And if you really, really love them, then help support me to make more from as little as a dollar a day, no, from as little as a dollar a month at Patreon. Have a good one and see you around like a wristle.